Hey, thanks for clicking that thumbnail. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the all new Moultrie Mobile Delta Cellular Trail Camera. So it seems like the last few years, trail cameras have been changing drastically, like cell phones and computers and any other kind of technology. There's just so many different features now. There's so many different cameras now. There's so many different services now. And it's hard to keep up. But I still want to try them all. I'm still waiting on that perfect camera. You know, it's just you're, you're waiting on that perfect camera. You want to you wanna have something that you just you know is going to work every time. It's going to give you all the features you want. So you got to try them all. And that's my problem is I try them all. But I will say that the first camera I ever used that was cellular was wasn't really a camera. It was actually a Moultrie MV1. So what it was, it was a modem that would connect to your Moultrie trail cameras. And then from there, the trail camera would take the picture, it would send it to the modem, and then from there, the modem would send it to the server, and then the server would send it to, your, to the app, and then it'd be on your phone. And it worked. It worked. I think I used that for about three years. It was the first one I ever bought because it was the only one that had Verizon signal. The Moultrie system, like I said, it worked really well. It was good and it just was complicated. You know, you had the modem, you had the camera, and then you had a cord going from the modem to the camera. And then I had solar panels for each one because the battery life back then was, was pretty crappy. I mean, it's still not great compared to a non-cellular trail camera, but it's a lot better than what it was. I was constantly going through batteries, so I ended up buying solar panels. By the time I was done, I had spent over 500 bucks on this whole package. So I was glad to see when they started coming out with more trail cameras that use Verizon and was all in one unit. So since the MV1, Moultrie has come out with a couple all-in-one cellular trail cameras, and I never picked one up. I've seen quite a few at the pawn shop, which kind of made me think like maybe they're not very good because I've seen a lot at the pawn shop. I don't know why. I saw the Moultrie Mobile Delta on some website and when I started looking at the specs, they're ridiculous. It's got a 32 megapixel sensor, has high dynamic range built into that sensor. Now I don't really know what the high dynamic range is for because that's more of like a photography thing. I feel like anyway to me, uh, unless you want to print some of these pictures out, that's great. It's got built-in GPS, and it claims that it sends high-definition videos right to your phone. So when I saw that, I was like, this is fantastic. I'm going to see what this thing costs. Clicked on the link, 99 bucks. 99 bucks for 32 megapixels and HD videos directly to your phone. Sounds too good to be true. So I bought one. I'm gonna head down to the studio, we'll do an unboxing, and then we'll set this thing up and we'll get some real quick test photos. By the end of this video, we'll have something on camera. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to read while I do this. This says Moultrie Mobile Delta Cellular Trail Camera. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that the rest of the video. That would be annoying. But as you can see on the box, it has 32 megapixel, high dynamic range images, built-in GPS, a new cell boost antenna, and up to 50% longer battery life. Now, I don't know about the battery life on the newer cameras, but the old ones really were, were bad. And then as far as the cell boost antenna, like I said before, I never had problems with cellular transmission. So I don't know what that entails, but if it's better, Cool. Now I have the Verizon version and then it says transmission series, X transmission series. So I don't know if that's a new series they have coming out with this camera here starting it, but that's what it's called. On the side of the box, it has details about the app. You have interactive maps, advanced species recognition, activity charting, remote setting changes, and weather data. Looks like you might have to pay for a more advanced app, but it says demo app for free. So I don't really know what this entails until we get into this. On the back of the box, it has other features. It shows the high definition video delivery, high dynamic range images, improved battery life, adaptive trigger, easy fast setup, designed for durability. It says they have the best value data plans, unlimited plans for little as $8 per month, 
Every plan comes loaded with features like free species recognition, unlimited cloud storage, and free interactive maps. So that means the cheapest one comes with all that stuff. And then I'm sure you probably just pay for more pictures or videos within the app. Other side of the box, once again, it says they have the 32 megapixel resolution, 0.35 second trigger speed, built-in GPS, 80 foot detection, invisible flash range, and then a new cell boost camera. If you scan this QR code here on the side, you can actually check the coverage for Verizon or AT&T so that you don't buy a camera that won't work in your area. On the top of the box, it says they're America's favorite trail camera. I don't know if that's true or not, but they would know. And then it's a hassle-free two-year warranty. So hopefully if something goes wrong with this, we can just send it in and they send me a new one. Let's go ahead and open up this box. So inside the box, they have it wrapped in plastic. You got your camera, your strap, your antenna, and then underneath is the manual. So with everything out on the table, you got your camera, your quick start video, your strap, Moultrie mobile sticker, and then they have a QR code you can scan to watch a quick start video of how to set this camera up real quick. On the front of your camera, like many cameras, you got your sensor, your camera, your LEDs, and then your indicated LED, and then I don't know what the other one is. So I don't know, we'll have to see in the manual, see if there's a difference between these, these two lights right here. On the bottom of the camera, there's a quarter 20 input nut. I don't really know what you call that when it's embedded into the camera or whatever you're using. It's got the microphone and then a 12 volt input for external power. On the back, you can run your strap through and it also has spots for security cables. When you open the camera up, you got your scan code at the top, then you got 12 AA batteries. And on the left side, it has all the instructions on how to activate your camera and get it started and get it going. So not only do you have the quick start guide, you also have the quick start guide on the inside of the camera. On the side, you got your SD slot, on and off button, format SD button, that's really nice. And then your connection status. So it should show that you're connected to the server, whether you have signal, your SD card is working, or if you have batteries. And then down here, it actually has all the information as to how those lights work. So we're gonna go into the app store, download. Now I've had it before because I used to have the MV1, so I don't have to purchase this again, which you don't have to purchase it anyway. So there it is on my phone. If you'd like me to send notifications, absolutely. Login, I already have a login. I'm looking at this, it actually has images from, oh, when was the last picture, let's see here. December 25th, so Christmas of 2017. It's the last time I had this camera up and going. All right, so we're in the app. Let's go to activate device, scan. I'd like to access my camera, yes. Validating. Calm down, man. Oh, it worked. So next. So you have a Pro Series Unlimited. So if you have multiple devices, this will be the cheaper plan. So if you pay it monthly, it's $34.99 for the first camera and then $7.99 for every camera after that. If you pay for the year up front, it's $22.99 a month plus $7.99 a month for each additional camera. I probably won't be buying more than one of these as of right now, so I'm going to go with the monthly unlimited plan, which is unlimited images plus 50 videos. And then you have the large plan, 1,500 images plus 25 videos, but for $2 more, you get unlimited pictures. Might as well do that. Um, standard is 1,000 images plus 10 videos. And then monitor, so it's 100 images plus four videos, and that's $4.99 a month. I'll put in my information real quick. Purchase the plan. So it says your camera is now activated but requires a firmware update. Please power on your camera and allow up to 10 minutes for the update to complete. So now the camera is blinking on the side there. Battery good, SD good. So it says we have signal, server not connected. So I don't know, I guess flashing, making more noise. So they're back to blinking. They were off.
for a while. So I think that the firmware is either being installed now or was being installed. So it looks like it's updating now. It says it will take 10 minutes. So I'm gonna turn the camera off. I figured while I'm waiting, I might as well just go into the app. I'm waiting for the camera to update the firmware and it's been going through this cycle now for probably two or three minutes. So I figured let's go ahead and go into the app. I can get all the settings. We can look over it real quick and then we'll just do a test picture here in the office and then we'll go set it up. And by the end of this video, you guys will actually see footage from the outdoors. So open the app, shows right there. I got the Moultrie Delta camera. Plan is unlimited. I have zero pictures, zero videos, and 30 days left. Now, uh, shows my SD card is slightly full. I think it's pretty full because I've been using it on, I, I didn't have any SD cards here, so I just pulled the one out of my Fusion that I've been using for my security camera. And then it also shows that the battery uh, is dead, but like I said, the camera is updating the firmware, so that might change once the firmware has been updated. We'll show it on this here in a little bit. Let's go into the details first. So battery percentage zero, signal strength zero. Everything is zero right now because the camera has not updated. Let's go into settings. All right, so you can change the name of the camera right here. You got your motion detection, capture mode, picture mode. You got photo plus video, I'm gonna do that. Frequency upload, so you got immediate, so it'll send you a picture immediately. Uh, one day, one a day, two a day, four a day, eight a day. And then video resolution. The one thing I don't know is it says HD, full HD, and I'll look in the manual and try to let you know, but it says video resolution. I assume that this is the resolution that it's saving to the camera. So you got HD and full HD. So HD is probably a 720p and then full HD is 1080p. So we're gonna go ahead and go with full HD. Video length. 15 seconds is your limit, so you don't have a choice. So your infrared sensitivity sensor setting is high, medium, low. I always go low. I will change this for the review video. Now this is just an overview video, just so everybody knows. This is only an overview video. I'm not gonna review this camera until I actually get to use it. I can't stand when people do reviews and they literally just open the thing. It hasn't even worked yet. Uh, detection delay. I'll go with 15 seconds. So you got 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or five minutes. So it's very limited on your selections. And then you can add a schedule, like I said before in other videos. I wanna see them, and then most of them come out at night, and then I wanna know when they're there during the day. This is more for security purposes. So if you guys are using this camera on a job site or anything like that, you can set it so that's only working when you guys are not at the job site. If somebody's stealing stuff while you're there, you got a whole different problem. So temperature set to Fahrenheit, I'm sure the option is Celsius. We are American, we do everything that everybody else doesn't do, so we are Fahrenheit. You can format the SD card. Uh, info strip, you can turn it on or off. I don't know from a scouting standpoint or even a security standpoint why you wouldn't want to have the info strip on. I've never understand why they allow you to turn it off. But in the case where I've talked about in other videos where if I wanted to use this as an art camera, and be able to capture images of animals or whatnot out in the wild that you wouldn't see normally because they run when they smell you or see you or hear you, etc. cetera. Uh, you can turn off that info strip and you'd have a nice picture you could print out or whatnot. 32 megapixel camera with HDR images. They're probably gonna be pretty good looking photos. And then manage memory, see what this says on the info. Response to the full SD. So if it's off when the SD is full, the camera will stop capturing the images. When it's on, the SD card will basically rewrite over the oldest images. Uh, everybody has their own name for this, but it's basically the same thing every other camera does. So if you're new to cellular cameras, you can click those info buttons and they will give you a description of what this actually is. So that's really nice. And then it also says recommendations. They have recommendations in there. So anyways, and then you got the GPS on demand. So GPS automatically updates every 24 hours. Should you need your location to be updated sooner, toggle this setting on and click save. At the next camera check-in, GPS lo location will be updated. So, so basically if somebody steals your camera, you might be able to find it. That's the one good thing with these cellular cameras. Most of them have this GPS locator built into them now and therefore as soon as somebody puts some batteries in that thing, they should be able to find it. 
All right, so we're gonna hit save. We'll go back, let's refresh, and there we go. So I refreshed it. Now it shows that we have full battery, full signal, and my SD card is almost full as well. So details, now it shows, if you click the details, it shows that you got 99% battery, signal strength is 100%, you got the modem, uh, so it's a modem model, so basically just says the name of the camera. Like I said, on the box, it shows that they have the transmission series, so I think they're going to have a bunch more of these cameras coming out. So if you see here, it has modem battery and camera battery. Now this one has a modem and a camera in there together, so I assume they just run off the same batteries. Maybe that's why there's 12 batteries. One runs off six, the other one runs off six. I don't know. Regardless, uh, that could be in there for that reason, or it could be because people are still out there running those MV1s. And then SD card used, I got 43%, and then I can change the name of my camera, but I'm not going to. And then if you want to update your plan, you can cancel, change plan, buy videos. So it looks like once you get hit your limit, if you want to buy more videos, you can. I'm going to go put this on my truck real fast and then do a walk by real quick. And then you guys can uh, see how quick it sends me the signal. So one thing I can say that I don't like is I don't like that the power button is a button. I'd rather have it be a switch because with a switch, I know for sure that it's on or it's off. And with this, if there's no lights that are lit up, I mean, right there it shows battery, so I know it's on, but it didn't come on until I moved it. I guess if it has a motion sensor, some kind of activity that makes it so you can tell, but when I opened this up earlier, it did not have any lights on, and I did not like that. A ring sent me a notification. Now, if it doesn't send me notifications, maybe it's due to the update or whatnot. I will let you know by the end of this video. I've learned a few things since I started this video. I wanna make sure I get this in the video so you guys can see some of this stuff. When I do the full review after probably three or four weeks, I will go way more into detail as to all the features within the app and the camera and so on. But for now, I'm just gonna go over the things that I have discovered since I started making this video. One, if you wanna change the display, you can hit this button right here and it will change the display. So you can scroll these pictures you know, nice and big like that if you want to, or if you get a thousand pictures in one night, then you can go down really big like that. You click the little person up at the top, click, and then that's how you get your notifications. So you can go in here and it'll tell you everything that you wanna get notified for. So if you wanna get notified for a new image, you can do a push notification and then that way it will alert your phone with the app and say, hey, you got a picture or whatever. Same with full resolution, camera battery low, camera storage low, the list goes on. And then as well, you can do the smart tag notification for a buck. So uh, basically what it'll do is it'll only notify your phone if a buck shows up. That's if you wanna do that, uh, or a turkey or a person or a vehicle, you know, depending on what you use it for. Once you get into the pictures, if you hit this little, I don't even know what that's supposed to be, but that little thing right there, if you click that, you can go through and you can filter this out. So you can choose the camera you want, want to filter. Now, right now I only have the Moultrie Delta, so I'm not gonna click that, but, but we can go to Smart Tags. So if we go to Smart Tags it'll, and you click Deer, it'll only show us Deer. If you want to go Buck, let's hit Apply, and then it's gonna filter out any of the pictures without a buck. So there's a buck, 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 buck. And let me go back here and we'll ch turn it off and see if there's a big difference or not. I don't know how many, they might all have bucks in them at the moment. Apply. Yeah, so there is a couple pictures of those. It added more pictures because uh, it, there wasn't a buck in the picture. So it does, it does change. And then you can go through and you can do high resolution apply and it's going to show you only the high resolution pictures. So I downloaded some high resolution pictures. The problem that I have is I wasn't taking high resolution photos. I didn't have the settings done properly within the camera so I didn't get that right. Then here you can go in you can choose the time of day. So like say you're going to sit in your stand from 3 o'clock to I don't know, 7 8 30 you can put in that time from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and it's going to show you when a deer is showing up, what deer is showing up, etc. 
Uh, you can also do it by moon phase temperature, date range, day and night, barometric pressure, a bunch of advanced stuff that I don't really know about. And then you can create your own custom tags as well. I don't know how to do that yet. Hopefully I'll learn how to do that by the time that I do the review. Now on the map, it shows where I am. So most of the pictures were taken 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. And then the temperature was, you know, between 60 and 80. And then for 35 pictures was between 80 and 100. Moon phase right now, I mean, like I only have one day of data, but it's a half moon. And then there's no weather information as of yet. Now, the one thing I do want to show you is if you go to photo plus video, it does not take a 32 megapixel photo, then make a video. It strictly takes a thumbnail photo that it sends to the camera that you can see and then it takes the video. If you want 32 megapixel photos, you have to go to photo. And then once you get into photo, you can actually change the size of the photos. I did not know that when I set this camera up. Therefore, I have no 32 megapixel photos for this video. I'll put some on my Instagram. So my Instagram's right here. And you guys can check those out in the next few days, hopefully. You can change it to, from one or three shots. Let me see if it makes a difference um, if I change the megapixel size and it's still three. So go down to eight and it's still three. So it's, you got one or three, whether it's four megapixel or 32 megapixel. And then you have the motion freeze setting. I assume that's for the infrared lights. I don't know for sure. Anyway, I'm going to go back to photo because I want to get some 32 megapixel photos. Those are the things I've learned in the last couple days, so hopefully that will help you guys out. So we're going to go out, we're going to check the Moultrie right now. It did send me images last night. I'll download those here in a little bit and we'll show you and then I'll compare them to the images that are directly on SD cards that are in there. I'm going to change the SD card to a full size SD card, not the mini SD card. I don't think it's working right with that card, but we'll find out if it changes and I'll let you guys know by the end of this video if it does change. So right now I'm setting this up. I will say that the boot time on this is quite a bit longer than any of the other cell trail cameras that I have. But it is booted up now. And then the only thing I don't like is it gets to this point right here. And it just stays green for a while. And I don't know when I'm supposed to leave. I don't know if I can leave like right away or, or do I have to wait for those to turn off. I'm getting used to a new setup and getting used to a new camera. so. There might not be any flaws in this thing, it's just I'm not used to it yet. But I know that it should be sending me notifications and it should be sending me pictures every time that it uploads a picture. And it didn't even get a picture of me on the Razer yesterday. So I'm a little worried about that. Um, but I got a brand new card, just opened it out of the package today. It's a full size card, 32 gigabyte. So it should be perfect for this. Lights are off shut it and uh, move on to the next one. Now that I've looked at these pictures, one thing I will say for sure is I'm not really that impressed by the images. I'm really impressed by the video that gets sent to my phone. That impresses me because it actually is an HD video that gets sent to my phone. But I'm not that impressed as far as the video quality that saves into the camera. It's just not that impressive to me. As well, the I did not have it set to 32 megapixel like I wanted to. I had it set to at least 16 megapixel. Uh, the 16 megapixel, I mean, a, a 4K image is what I use. So when I edit and you import something in, it's gonna be, you know, it's either gonna be smaller or it's gonna be bigger than the 4K editing platform. And when I put the picture in there, it was bigger. So I'm thinking it's probably the 16 megapixel. Uh, 4K is around 10. And 
it was not it wasn't super big compared to the 4k image but it was bigger for sure so i'm thinking it was a 16 megapixel image which makes me think it doesn't really take that good of images um, that deer in the picture in that first image there that deer the quality is really not that impressive i mean there wasn't a lot of detail in the face there wasn't a lot of detail in the weeds or the leaves behind it but it is 99 dollars and for the scouting purpose of it it actually works really well Another thing I noticed looking at these pictures is it seems to have a hard time transitioning from night to day. So it runs the infrareds even though it's probably like sunset. I don't know exactly what's going on, but you know, it's just, it's too dark just to run the regular camera, but it's too light out to run the infrared. So there's a real hard transition point problem right now as far as this camera goes now other mole trees that are out there you know if anybody has this camera you know leave a comment down below that you're not having this problem or you are having this problem so as far as the mole tree goes i think it really has potential to be a good camera especially at the 99 dollar price point it has the potential to be a really really good camera in the quick start book it does say do not use a mini SD card. And that's what I had in there. And I was having all types of problems with it. And now that I have a full SD card in there, it's been working great. It's been working fine. And then also make sure you go into that setting where I showed you how to set the notifications because I wasn't getting any notifications to my phone. It was really making me mad. Once I figured that out, I was getting tons of notifications. So come back in a couple of weeks and I'll go into more details in the app. We'll have a lot more information to go through because we'll be getting more pictures. I have two, you know, a day and a half of pictures taken, so I don't really have that much information. Plus, I really haven't got to play with the app as much as I want to. So if you're interested in just this camera, come back in three, four weeks, and I will have a full review as well. I'm going to do a camera comparison video where I compare all the cellular cameras in this price point. So I did one a couple years ago. People seem to like it. I'm going to do it again this year with the newer cameras, as well as I'm going to do it with uh, some non-cellular cameras and i'm going to do it with some more expensive cellular trail cameras i hope you guys like this overview of the moultrie mobile delta cellular trail camera for this price point it's going to be hard to beat the moultrie delta cellular trail camera i mean it really is for what it gives you it gives you a lot they give you 50 video downloads and the video quality on the downloads from this delta cellular trail camera is really good same as all the other videos that i do i want to let you know i'm not affiliated with moultrie they do not pay me. They did not send me this camera. This is just an honest review that I'm doing from a consumer standpoint. Thanks for watching. Comment down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. I gotta go.